Hey everybody, welcome to my Unity tutorial. In this video, we're going to be talking about dynamic audio or music. So essentially what that is, say you're in a certain area. In this instance, I'm in a grass area. And when you want to go to a certain area, the music may change. For example, if you go into a cave, the music may change by applying reverb, perhaps a certain filter, or maybe you change the instruments altogether, but you keep the same song, but changing the instruments. That's what my example does. So I'll show you guys right now. I think it's very useful to have in your game. You want to have like a kind of cohesive world within your game. So here we have this song playing, and then if we go to the desert area, it should ch change something like a desert. And then if we change to the snow, it changes once again. And one more time. And one thing to note is that when we transition to another area, it kind of picks off where the other one left off. So that's kind of what we're going to be accomplishing in this video. One thing I want to talk about before we start is that I have two packages downloaded from Unity. So if you go to the window tab here at the top, you go to the package manager, click on that. And I downloaded the Unity input system for moving the character around. And I also use Cinemachine for the, because I like using Cinemachine's cameras. They're very easy to use and they apply a lot of really good tools to them. So without further ado, let's get started. All right, now that we got this empty scene here, let's set it up. So first off, I'll create this empty object called our environment. Going to create a plane to simulate our environment here. Switch to the top. Going to call this grass. Can unduplicate it again. Call it sand. Let's move it over to the right. And I'm going to duplicate these two so that we don't have to duplicate it one at a time. Call this one other. Call this one snow. And let's create materials for them. Go to a folder, call it materials. Let's go down to our materials. There it is. Call this one grass. Drag it onto grass. Normally I would have used just like just basic colors, but for this I'm gonna get some images to apply onto these. So I'm going to import a new assets. So for the grass, we'll just drag it into the albedo. This one is sand. Apply that texture on there. This one is snow. And then other, drag that on there. Let's make that a two by two. That way it's a little more detailed. All right. So now for each of these objects, we want to create a trigger for the player. So we're going to make a box collider. And for that box collider, we want to make it a trigger. As I said before, I'm going to give it a height of five. And I think it's 2.5. I know the value is just because I was like messing around before practice and these values seem to work fine. You can just mess with the, the collider here or with these values here. You can get the desired size that you want. For this, we're going to want a size of 8.8 8 because we don't want it matching the entire area of the plane. We just want it to be somewhat inside. That way there's these gaps. I'll explain why these gaps are important later on, but for right now, just keep in mind you want a little bit of leeway room between the two. So after that's done, let's create an empty object called this music manager. This will be in charge of keeping track of all the songs or which song to play. Let's create player here to move around. Player, moving over to this grass area and let's give him some physics. So rigid body. We're just gonna give him uh, gravity so he falls down. Just make sure that works properly. Okay. Works fine. So we're going to want to make a camera 
that follows the player around. And we can do this easily with Cinemachine. Just create a virtual camera. And if we go to Cinemachine virtual camera, we can drag our follow and our look at. And then we just need to, I think it's just the Y. Yep, we can just affect the Y. Make it a four, seems okay. Let's see how it looks when he falls down. Perfect. All right, so now we can, we'll move the character around. Let me go back to assets. Let's create a C sharp script called player movement. Player movement, that'll be fine. Drag this onto our player. And before we do that, we're going to go down to input actions at the bottom here, and we're going to create some controls for our player. So it's called player move. If we click on here, we can get uh, a new action map. I'm going to call this move uh, for the actions. It was this one, but I'm just going to rename it to, oops, to move. And I believe it comes with the binding, so we're going to delete this binding and add a new one by right-clicking and add 2D vector composite. This is good for two-dimensional movement. And in a 3D, more we're just mainly going to focus on, I think, the X and Z coordinates. So I'm just going to call this move. Oops. Move. I'm going to call it arrows because we're using the arrow keys in this instance you can do whatever you want and you can have multiple ones and it'll work the same so if we click on path here click listen and you can press whatever inputs you're going to use so i'm going to do the up arrow it gives it detects the up arrow so you just left click on that afterwards Let's see so down we want the down arrow left we want the left arrow right we want the right arrow we got that all sorted out. We can save this asset, close it. We want to generate a C class over here. So if we do player move controls, oops, and we want to do dot CS, it's a C file, and make sure to name it the same player move controls. And we want to click apply. Cool. So now if we go back to our player movement, I'm going to delete these two lines up here because we don't really need it. If we do need it, it'll complain to us and we'll just insert it for ourselves. So we're going to need a float value. Call this player move speed. I'll set it to three for right now. I think that's it. So let's make a private boolean. Call it is move set it to false and then a private player move controls the script that we made for the various inputs player move controls and then we're going to in our awake function we'll instantiate a player move controls by saying new player move controls pretty simple and then since we're using the input system, we want to make sure that we're not having any issues if we disabled our player or turned on our player. So we need to make sure to use on enable. And we just say player move controls dot enabled. And the same thing for disabled. So on disable. This is just a thing to keep in mind if you ever use the input system. Disable. Now that we got that out of the way, we can make the actual code to move our player. So we can do in our, I believe it's start method, we can set up some functions so that it knows when to do movement. So we're going to say player move controls dot move. So this is the name of the first uh, action map. And then the next thing is the input action, which is also called move. And then we want to know when it's being performed. So when we're pressing it, we want to say plus equals, and this might be kind of confusing, but we just want to say underscore, and then this arrow here, this is called lambda, I believe. So this is going to be what function we want. And I'm just going to say is move is true. 
So this might be a lot to take in, but just understand we're calling this thing, this is essentially an event that says when this event is being performed, we want to call this action because this plus equal means it's subscribing. So it wants this action to occur when this perf when we're moving our player essentially with the controls that we've assigned. And if player moved controls isn't being performed, what we want to do is say is move is false. So I believe it's canceled. We want to say oops. We just set it to false. So we do all that so that in our update we can say if is move is true, then we do our private void move. I'm gonna call it do move. So called do move here. And then all we want to do is get a vector two, call it move, move direction, and we want to say player controls, I believe it's move dot move dot read value. This is going to be a vector two because we signed that binding to a vector two before. But the issue is that this is a vector two and we want to transform it into a three-dimensional movement. So I'm going to make a vector three, which you would usually want to do. I'm going to call this corrected direction. And we want to take an, the constructor for a vector three and say, we want the X value from our move here direction. We want zero on the Y because we don't want to be moving vertically. We just want to be moving uh, forward and back and left and right, not up and down. And then the move deer for the Y. And so all we need to do now is just tr get our transform dot translate function. So this will move us around. We can use the corrected version and we want to do, I believe it's the move speed times time delta time. So that way it smooths it out. And I'll just do space.self. I think that's all we need to do. So if we go into Unity, press play, see what happens. Cool. Now we're moving. It's a little slow, so I'll change the speed up to like five. I think the camera needs to move up a little. Let's see if five. Cool. That all seems good. So now we actually need to focus on the music part. So that's not going to be that difficult. So let's go to the music manager first. Create music manager. Once again, I'm going to delete these two lines. I'm going to delete this code. I'm going to have this here. This doesn't need to be serialized field, um, but I'll just leave it anyways. Call it current song. Set it to null. We'll have a public getter function, audio source current song. And that's going to set it for us, and that's all we need to do here. And so for the other song, or for these areas we're going to add change i'm going to call it transition music let's edit that and then here we're going to have another audio source this one's going to be music change, set it to null. So we're going to use the onTrigger function to call this function. We're going to check if a player has triggered the box collider. 
So we just do other dot game object dot compare tag check is player. This will just be a simple way to look at it for our if statement. And make sure to change your player to have a tag. So we say if is a player. And we just want to change song. That's going to be a function we'll make, private void change song. And then here, all we need to do is call our music manager. So let's make a music manager mm. And we just need to get a find object of type music manager. I believe you can make it a static uh, object or a static method. But for right now, I'm just going to do it like this. And we want to check if our music manager is null. If so, let's return. If the song, though, is null, that means there's no song playing and we should set a song to play. So we say mm.currentSong is equal to the music to change to. Uh, one thing I want to talk about, we're going to need audio sources on each of these so that we can know what music to change to, right? So let's get audio source. Something important is that all of our songs need to have mute, play on awake, and loop. I'm going to set their volumes to 0.5 because it's not too loud that way. And then we can obviously put in the songs. I'll put them in in just a moment. The reason I'm talking about that is how we're setting up the, the code here. So once we assigned the current song to the music to change, I wanted to have music current song dot mute set to false because what we're going to be doing is having multiple songs playing at the same time, but they're all muted and we only unmute them when we transition into that certain area. So this might be a little inefficient if you have multiple songs, but I really don't recommend having if you're going to have more than 10 songs in one level, I would not recommend using this on how inefficient it might be having all these audio sources playing at the same time, even though they're, they're muted. And then we'll just need to return. Otherwise, what we need to do is mute the current song and change the current song to music to change. And then just do mm current song dot mute is false. That way we can hear it. And this is just saying that we're repeating this current song, but it's fine. So let me just clean up our, our stuff here. So this is scripts. And then create a folder for the music. import the music. Okay, our music has been imported. One thing I forgot to mention was that all of the audio files that you're going to be using in this project, they need to be the same size because what we're utilizing is, since we're looping all of the, the music together, if the music isn't the same size when it loops back again and you try to transition to another song, it's not going to be leaving off on the last part of the other song and you're going to be getting some weird issues with that so just make sure that the songs that you're using are all the same length so now for grass we want the regular drag our audio source on there sand desert other so that's the techno and finally ice for the snow and if we press play, we should hear some music, hopefully. Okay, so it's the default one I had before. And if we go here, it goes to the desert. It goes to the snow. And goes to the other song. <laughs> so one thing I want to mention, um, so, whoops.
So because we had those, uh, if you can see here, we have the space in between. The reason why we want to have those is because if we didn't and we had it right at the edge of the plane, what would happen is if we're in this kind of situation where we're touching both the grass music and the desert music, it's going to sometimes not call properly or it would call the sand and it would call the grass at the same time and the grass would overtake the sand like in a priority sense so it calls sand but then immediately goes back to the grass and it doesn't change the song so it would still be playing the grass music here but here since we're no way touching it at least we have that space away it's just going to be touching the sand and calling the sand music But you might have something where it's like you're doing this. But that should be fine. So, so that's it for this video. Hopefully you guys enjoyed.